So for this week's a clinical file, we have Chauncey, and Chauncey is an obese 56-year-old male with a history of smoking. The patient presents with intense cramping in the right distal calf when ambulating greater than five minutes. Which of the following findings is the least anticipated? So we have A, ulceration on the dorsal side of the toes. B, intense allodynia over regions of ulceration. C, pain that improves with dependency. And D, is a three plus dorsal pedial pulse or pedal pulse. Let's go ahead up to the top of the question and knock down this one. It's all about, you know, into that vascular area right now, we can tell, right? So let's break this down. We got Chauncey is an obese 56 year old male with a history of smoking. Now, smoking sets us up for a lot of different pathologies, but one in particular. Actually, it's kind of hard to just say one because, I mean, it sets you up for things like coronary artery disease, right? It sets you up for metabolic conditions. It sets you up for arterial problems as well, like vascular problems. So smoking, it sets you up for a lot. I know, I know. I didn't mention COPD either. Yeah, you know, it sets you up for emphysema and stuff like that. Um, but right now, we know that this patient is not just obese, but they have a history of smoking. Right. So that's something to keep in mind as we continue down. Now, it says the patient presents with intense cramping in the right distal calf when ambulating greater than five minutes. A lot of juicy information here. All right. I want to slow up for a second because uh, there, there's an opportunity for you to kind of go different ways of thinking. You can start to think of neurogenic claudication tends to be more spinal stenosis, compressing of the nerve, and the patient starts gets cramping when they're ambulating for longer distances. That's, that's more of neurogenic claudication. But there's this other one that we can get, this other type of claudication. Are you familiar with that? The, you know, the cramping that you get in the calves for after you're walking for a period of time? What's the other type of claudication that you can get? You should be saying intermittent claudication. Well, what causes that? arterial insufficiency problems is where the blood flow isn't getting down to those those muscles that need it those muscles that are working and so the patient starts to end up with cramping where they, they they're like I, I gotta stop I gotta quit I gotta rest because my legs are bothering me so bad arterial insufficiency and so when I'm looking at this I see intense cramping in the right distal calf when ambulating greater than five minutes it is really saying to me intermittent claudication is likely. Why? Because the patient has a, their patient's uh, obese, uh, 56 years old, so they're older and they're smoking. I mean, it's just setting the patient up for something like this, setting the patient up for arterial insufficiency. Okay. So again, blood flow, not getting down to those muscles that need it to the areas of the body, more into the distal extremities. And so we start to have problems like intermittent claudication. Okay, let's continue forward. It says, which of the following findings is the least anticipated? Oh, now y'all have heard me time and time again, whether you're on the podcast, you're live with, he, uh, with me right now, or uh, listen to me on replay. You've heard me go over this multiple times. Do not get caught in the trap of least. All right, when they put the word least or not in the in the question. A lot of test taking errors happen here where your mind is going toward most and that's what you're thinking, but nope, the question's asking you for least. So it's very important that we make sure our answer satisfies that. For those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choice again. We have A, ulceration on the dorsal side of the toes. B, intense allodynia over regions of ulceration. C is pain that improves with dependency. And D is a three plus dorsal pedal pulse. All right. So let's go up to a ulceration on the dorsal side of the toes. Do I get this with arterial base problems? Like, let's say I had, well, in this case, we do have findings very consistent with arterial insufficiency. So my question to you is, if I get an arterial insufficiency ulcer, would I find it on the dorsal side of the toes? 
yes or no? The answer to that is absolutely. It's more common to see it on the dorsal side of the toes than to see it on the plantar side. That's very true. But it's, it's, it's very likely that I'll see ulceration, arterial insufficiency ulcers on the toes. But why? Why on the toes? Because aren't the toes the most distal part of the body? When we're talking about the lower extremity, they're the most distal part of the body. So they're getting the blood flow last. If there's any type of blood flow restriction, the toes are going to be the most affected. They're getting, they're getting the last of the line of blood flow. Does that make sense? So of course we start to end up with things like arterial insufficiency ulcers on place like the toes. All right. Now we can also get them on the lateral side of the foot. That's very common. That may be what you were thinking of lateral side of the, the foot, maybe lateral malleolar region, you know, something like that. But yeah, you can get it there and on the dorsal side of the toes. So what do I want to do with this answer? I want to put an X next to it. It's not the right answer because remember, I'm looking for the thing that is the least anticipated. Let's look at B. B says intense allodemia over regions of ulceration. Intense allodemia. Well, if you're not familiar with that term, it's really when you either palpate or touch a part of the body that shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't be a painful stimulus, but yet it is. It's like a hypersensitivity to something that shouldn't really be painful at all, right? And so does these patients end up with increased hypersensitivity or increased sensitivity over regions of ulceration? The answer to that is absolutely. I would expect that. These patients have a lot of pain when it comes to their ulcers and around that area of the ulcer. They're very hypersensitive. So even if you, they rub a sheet across it or if they just put some pressure on it, things that not necessarily should be that painful, this patient is hypersensitive to that. So do I expect increased hypersensitivity over regions of ulceration, yes or no, the answer to that is absolutely. It cannot be the right answer. Again, I'm looking for the least anticipated. Least anticipated, cool? All right, let's look at C. C says pain that improves with dependency. Would I expect to see this in a patient with arterial insufficiency? The answer to that is, what would y'all say? I might have to pull out my pen and draw a little leg and a foot right now, I feel so good. All right, there we go. So. Sorry for those of you on the podcast, you can't see my beautiful foot that I just created. But when you think about a lower extremity, uh, extremity and you're imagining it, what is going to help blood flow get down to the, the foot and the toes more? Putting it in a dependent position or putting it in a position where the leg is elevated and now let's say the, the leg is above your heart. Which one's going to be better? Putting it in a, in a dependent position or a position where the leg's elevated. What's well, going to help blood flow get down there better? Definitely dependency. So a patient who has arterial insufficiency is going to love when their leg is in a dependent position. Why? Because it's helping the blood flow get down to the toes better. So do I expect a patient who has arterial insufficiency pain? to improve with dependency or keeping the leg down? Absolutely, I do expect that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an X next to this one because the question is asking which of the following is the least anticipated? Right now, I would expect A, B, and C, but hold on a minute, let's look at D. D says three plus dorsal pedal pulse. Now, in order to be confident getting this question correct, you have to know a little bit about that that uh, that that pulse grading scale. All right, you may not have looked at it in a while. So, the pulse grading scale, uh, if you follow O'Sullivan, like you go to your big red textbook, right? Um, they have a scale in there. It goes zero, one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. Well, what is a three plus dorsal pedal pulse? What does that mean to you? You should be saying, uh, "Baby, that that's normal." A three plus is normal on that scale. It's easy to palpate. Do I expect a dorsal pedal pulse that's easy to palpate normal 
on a patient who has arterial insufficiency? Absolutely not. I expect it to be weak, a two plus. I expect it to be thready. You know, one that kind of fades in and fades out. It's barely perceptible. I'm barely able to see if it's even there. I expect that with arterial insufficiency, not a normal pulse. Think about it. If the blood's not getting down there very well, of course it's not going to be normal. And so the question, again, ask us, which of the following findings is the least anticipated? Well, D would be the least anticipated. The three plus dorsal pedal pulse. Let's get it. All right, for those of you who got this one correct, congratulations. This one isn't easy. I know some of you kind of went back and forth with the second guessing a little bit, like, is it this, is it that? Um, I think that when you're studying for the MPTE, this is an area where you got to spend some time. And, you know, with these, you know, questions that I give you, You'll probably hear me all the time saying, you need to study this area. Well, I'm giving you the things that are likely to show up on the exam. These are very common to show up in your first six months of practice. They're very common conditions, arterial insufficiency, arterial insufficiency ulcers. They come up all the time. And so you need to be ready to determine, okay, what are the findings that I expect to see with arterial insufficiency? What are the ones I expect to see with venous insufficiency? What are the ones I expect to see with some type of peripheral neuropathy-based condition? In a neuropathic ulcer, what's the differences? You have to know these going into the NPTE. Does that all make sense? For those of you on the podcast right now, I got a cheat sheet for you, baby. If you go into the show notes, click the link in there. Um, I separated out all the major types, the venous, the arterial insufficiency, the neuropathic. It's in there for you. So go in there and get it.